Hey guys, welcome back. Um, been gone for a minute. A lot of stuff going on in, in the shop. We got new uh, lifts, couldn't put it in. Um, just, just so, so, so busy. And then I, I tuned like three or four cars and I didn't make videos. I mean, I did make videos. I just didn't upload it. Um, a Subi, uh, a Z06 and another Evo or something. But I just wanted to update you. Today we have a special, special, special uh, <clears throat> tuning session for you guys. But today um, I'm going to be tuning one of my friend's brother from another mother uh, car. And I'm gonna try to walk through everything that we're doing. And it's a special setup for Evo X. And I hope you guys like it. But let's do the first part of the, the video, which is updates on what's going on. So we got two new motors done. We just finished up the two engines. This is a uh, Evo 8, I think. And this is a six bolt, the DSM. Um, we are currently building. They're both going to have zonas. This one's going to have a 95, and so will that one. We'll see, you know, 6-bolt uh, versus 7-bolt uh, 4G60T, what goes on. It's going to be a really good comparison. And um, not this one, but this one is the 7-bolt um, the head ported fully. It's going to get S3s. This is going to get S2. It's an Evo 9 head, not for one of these engines, stock bottom. So we decided to go with Kelly crank on this one. So let me see if I can show you. So we decided to go with Kelly crank on this one, the six bolt. Because at the time, that was the only thing available. But it turned out pretty good. Machine shop did a great job balancing and and notching the block and everything. Um, this is gonna go on that uh, DSM, which has a six bolt conversion. Spinning very nicely. Can't wait for this. We've got 625 rod bolts on this and most of our engines we do 625s and uh, ARP mains. And this, both of them actually have um, Manly Turbo Tough and both of them have CP. But this one's a 2.2 and this one's a 2.0. So I um, can't wait for the, for the comparison when we get to it. Um, so let me show you what's going on in the shop. Anybody call in the shop? I'm getting the wrong answers. These are the people that are giving it to you. So let me know. I figured I'd take you up high. Just want to give a layout of the shop. We're going to put two more lifts by that other wall near the blue Subaru and that white Evo. Um, and I think a welding station at the corner. That's Joseph's, I'm sorry, not Joseph's, uh, Jose's. He's getting a stage two head, stock turbo stock, everything, Evo 9. GTO still out a few weeks. Uh, Alex's car is almost Almost done. We're gonna start on Nick when his suspension comes in, which is probably gonna be next week. Cruzito got his finally got his turbo. That Subaru engine done. Waiting to get some space to put it in. This is a new car. Danny compression checked out good. He's got injectors that needs tuning. He's gonna do flex fuel. And uh, well, I'm sorry, E85. He needs a new blower valve because I hate these. If you're going to run MAF, please. The Supra, we got everything going, but we had injector issues. The injectors were FID 1600s and it was pretty bad. 
Trailblazer is almost done. We're just waiting for the electric fan to come in. This got converted from belt driven fan to electric fan. I don't know who this is, but he's got uh, bearing issues on the throw bearing. This is a car we recently got. I think, uh, oh yeah, ECU was missing. So the customer who bought us ECU just doing maintenance and a tune. Sal, still waiting for the turbo. And this one, we're tuning next week. He brought the car in, he had boost leak issues, his injectors were messed up. If you guys remember this, we built the bottom end, our 1,000 horsepower uh, block. Uh, we didn't do the head, but it has the AMS head. Our fuel rail, well, I'm sorry, the radium fuel system, complete. Built trans, built everything. And he's got the radium dual pump with the inline fuel, wired everything up. I really like the radium system. This is from St. Louis. All right, wired everything up real good. This is Carl's car, 6466, right Carl? All right, we're gonna get that going soon. That's the six, six bolts we're doing, custom wiring the entire car, IGN-1 coils, Haltech, the whole enchilada. This is uh, Zaid. So his turbo was originally smoking and he's got a new 6262. We're gonna get it going. We're missing, oh, he has an oil leak with the, uh, where his oil pressure housing is. And then we're gonna fix that and basically good to go. On to Joe. So this is, this car actually has our ECU master plug and play, the whole thing. Um, I just wanted to kind of speak on that. So ECU Master is pretty price comparison to Motec. Motec is like 4,500. This will straight up just plug in and if, you know, using our base, it'll fire up too. Um, just a couple of procedures and, you know, which we will help you with. So this is literally, you plug it in, get the ECU, get the harness from us, plug it in and you're good at tuning. So let me just show you that. Yeah, volume, see this, My new technicians be listening to some whack ass. I was about to say, what the fuck shit is this? See, look, that's Carl listening to that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got something very, very special today. The man, the legend, he hails the from the Hmong Mountains of Wisconsin, <laughs> right? We got Joe and his car. Uh, he's actually helping me set up the new welder that we got because he's actually a uh, prefabricator by trade. Um, but let's go over to his car, show you what we got. So this is a package that we also offer uh, what he has. He has a fully built engine, not by us, um, but the ECU kit is by us. So this is a ECU master plug and play black it literally is plug and play um and we're testing everything out but so far so good and uh his engine is sleeved wiseco manly uh, stock crank what what kind of cams you got uh, he got a couple b cams and he's got the g35 1050 uh turbo stock tranny and aftermarket ECU. So we're tuning today on flex fuel. So if anybody's interested, you let me know. This is a beautiful car. So the ECU Master is one of my favorite 
ECUs to aftermarket ECUs to tune on. Um, they do have the CAN protocol for Mitsubishi's, so the harness was not that difficult to make, and it encompasses everything um, for it to make it just straight up plug and play. And it's something I would consider anyone who's running 800 plus horsepower. I didn't realize he had an HKS. Excuse me while I give him some lip. <laughs> Seriously, bro? <laughs> All right, so we're going to get it on the dyno. Ignore the dying teenager. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. He got that on real quick. Yeah, he's going to um, do a all right, first run, 93, wastegate only. Yeah, this thing's been acting up recently. So this was the first run. Um, he's making like 27 to 28 PSI. And um, the pickup didn't, for some reason, calculate torque correctly. So the squiggly line is for the torque. The straight line is for the horsepower. I've noticed that from the gauges of the dyno that this was happening. More on that to come. Yeah. One of my favorite things about uh, ECU Master is the logging system. It is really robust um, and the sampling rate is pretty high. And the way the whole setup is, the way it's, um, I guess, structured, <clears throat> really agrees with the way I think. Um, so I love using that. They also, the ECU Master Black also has the ability to use both 4.2 or 4.9 Bosch Wideband. And everything on this ECU is closed loop, which is a plus for anyone who's, you know, uh, looking to learn how to tune or is at the beginning stages of uh, getting into it. So I'm just dialing in the fuel at this point. I haven't made any real changes. Uh, same boost as before, same timing. Um, dialing in the VE. So I did not go closed loop on fuel yet. I actually do that at the end when all is said and done. I got the fuel exactly where I want it. I don't actually use the um, wideband for you know my base fuel calculations and whatnot. I just use it for slight adjustments after the tune is over about five to six percent maybe at max when it needs it um, but it's typically you know using just the you know VE calculations to get the feeling correct um, but this graph is literally what I felt um, kinda notchy it feels like a little breakup um, you know but it was running very very rich so I thought it was because of that but we'll see later what it is exactly all right, I think he's good. I'm just going to do a last run on 93. Click OK. Uh. Click OK. 
and then we'll switch to 85. At this point, we um, achieved our 93 octane power goals, which was supposed to be 500. He just wants them to, you know, that tune just to clean his injectors. Um, so that that misfire, slight misfire, still plagues. It's much less than before. I've increased the dwell time just a little bit, based on uh, who, what the coils were, which he is saying that is GTR. So we're also going to regap. Um, the spark plugs I know at this rate it's not gonna hold up a higher boost all right so we got the ethanol uh, table flex fuel set up same everything as the 93 I just want to see fueling and everything else So this is with just a fuel change. Um, it was 75% ethanol, no other changes, no boost, no timing, no nothing. And it's still, as soon as we changed the fuel, it was like 10.5, maybe 11, uh, low 11s AFR, which is very rich. So I have to adjust the scaler um, on the flex fuel that the ECU master strategy is used on, is based on. I'm just going to adjust the wastegate just slightly. I want to see if everything is correct on the wastegate control. Um, nothing crazy. percent duty cycle I was able to increase the boost by one to two psi and this is the result so I'm gonna start to dial it in part of the boost dialing process um, for me definitely is making sure that my mistakes are going to be corrected by the ECU so now I'm going to check if the boost controlling aspect the safety feature the boost cut and over boosting areas are intact and working correctly So that was just a test. Um, I wanted to see if the boost controller and its uh, ceiling is working, basically your fuel cut, and it is. So I set it to 33 PSI and I set the boost to 35 PSI 
and checking the logs, it started the uh, timing retard and fuel cut uh, with the hysteria being around 2 PSI. So everything is on point. I'm confident now that I can push the car and still have my ceilings and my floors in place. This is at 32 PSI um, and I had to make some dwell adjustment to the ignitions All right, 32 pounds. and I haven't dialed in the uh, timing yet and it's still running later. pretty rich. All right, lunch is over. First run after lunch. So this was still at 32 pounds, but one degree of timing and about 0.3 AFRs leaner. Um, and I noticed that the graph is reading better now that I adjusted the, the dwell time of the coils. And usually that doesn't affect the dyno, at least I haven't noticed, but I want to verify that there's a, a relation. So just for uh, viewing purposes, I'm going to delete the, the previous one that did not read RPM correct. And we're going to use this one. Um, and now I can talk about the spool. I'm not even trying and he's hitting whatever I'm throwing at so far 32 PSI um, at around 55. But let's see if that stays with the higher boost level. For the V-band. Yep, that is the ECU one before the V-band. Okay, because this one's reading 10.5, this one's reading 11.5. What? This one is reading 10.5, uh -huh. this one's reading 11.5. So Joe just told me that he's suspecting a leak in the V-band, but there's two O2 sensors, we have a secondary wideband, and one is located before, the other one is after, and there is a discrepancy, so... Um, yeah, the, the leak is real, but luckily the wideband that I'm using for the ECU is before the leak, so we should be okay. Now I'm going to try to boost to 35 to 36 um, and slowly creep up. They're still running rich, 11.3, 11.5. Uh, with the ethanol content the way it is, I am confident in running you know, 11.8, maybe 12.1. But we're going to keep it this way until we get to the uh, load level that we want. The VE in that area is still um, not, uh, I would say, is dialed in. It's pretty close based on you know the boost and what the turbo uh, is capable of. But still, at this point, it's just an intelligent guess. increased boost level the breakups are bad I'm pretty much at the limit or recommendation uh, of the ignition coils dwell I can try to increase it I'm I am going to in a little bit but I'm really really cautious about uh, playing with ignition time and their uh, dwell time because it can you can fry the coils um, he's saying that he got GTR coils I haven't personally checked um, but you know, he's Joe knows what he's doing, so
that was pretty bad. The breakup was just terrible. Um, I am telling Joe that I think something's wrong. We're gonna have to re-inspect the, you know, either the coils or or the plugs. So uh, again, I'm gonna try adjusting a few things. Uh, fuel is a little rich. I'm gonna try to lean it out a little bit, um, and then see where we are. So no, this is not going to work. Uh, we're going to have to regap the plugs again um, and then inspect the coils. So that's what we're going to do right now. Your ignition broke up for a minute. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah? Just making sure you heard it too. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> Alright, regap the plugs. I increased the dwell time a little bit. Let's see how that works out. Regapping the plugs definitely helped, but I am stuck at like 36, 37 pounds. Um, cannot really go past that. <clears throat> so I told him, we're gonna inspect your coils, like take them out, really inspect your coils because I'm suspecting that they're really not GTR coils because they would, if it was authentic GTR, it would hold up. So these are the coils and the part number that we sell at the shop and we always get them from Nissan dealership and they do come with warranty and it's a part of our kit. And these are the coils Joe has on his car which he thought was GTR. And I swear I didn't add those cricket sounds. So now that I know All I'm right. stuck between 36 and 38 pounds, I'm just going to maximize what I have until he can get uh, better coils. Uh, maybe him and I will work uh, on a IGN-1 system. And we'll take it from there. final numbers uh, given what was given to us what he has definitely room for more this is a bad 36 38 pounds I mean I think this thing will do great at 42 44 and uh, the timing is pretty low as well I'm gonna say I think we left it off at like 17 18 degrees or something like that so there's still uh, a bit of room so I'm doing something uh, very bad over here. Um, Yer, who is Joe's wife, is scared of fast cars, and I, you know, requested that she uh, kind of take this ride to see how fast it is, and I asked Joe to check out how his car is. Um, and I thank Yer for actually going through this for me. 
and the, the reaction is just priceless but mm -hmm. you know we we got work to do we got to fix the ignition system we got to come back and retune it uh, properly and basically yeah but I'm happy with the way the ECU master turned out a big thanks to Joe and his family and his crew for actually allowing uh, me to be a part of this and you know going back and forth e-tuning beforehand actually we started the car on an e-tune uh, from you know from scratch and it's very painless so if any one of you is interested in, in getting an aftermarket ECU you're at that level where you need it um, ECU master with our plug and play harness is definitely a good viable option Moltec is always out there as well but this is half the cost so I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the reaction I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Um, those of you who subscribed, thank you for subscribing. I hope more people do. It motivates me to bring more content out. I want to like thank Joe again and his like family this. for everything. Like like, the car is amazing. He, Joe did a good job of putting everything together. And um, we are located in Illinois. That's the one of the biggest questions that I get. Like we are located awesome. in Illinois, Romeoville. So if you okay. want to reach out to us, either look for BD Alchemist or look for uh, Blueprint Autosport. And we're on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Thank you.